Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. We're doing something different today. I'm standing up. We're got a nice little cute backdrop. Um, honestly, I just wanted to see if I liked standing while doing these videos. So I don't know if you like this background, let me know in the comments. But today I'm really excited because we're going to be talking about a recent read of mine that I gave five stars, and that is Sophie Lark's Anastasia. So if you don't know me, you want to know this, <laughs> um, obviously, that I love the movie Anastasia. I remember growing up watching this movie so much with my mom and just loving everything about Anya and Dimitri and um, like the princess Anastasia and Russia and the music, the songs. I loved it all. Like, it was just so magical. One of my favorites growing up. Fast forward to today, we have Sophie Lark releasing this kind of very loose, like nothing in this is like accurate, reimagining of Anastasia's story where she actually gets a happy ending. Um, and it's actually a fantasy book. So we are put in early 1900s Russia, um, we have Tsar Nicholas still in power, but the people are not happy with him. Um, I am very fascinated with the history of Anastasia, and I, you can definitely tell in this book that Sophie Lark did her homework on the true history behind her family, the Romanov family, and um, the rise of the Bolsheviks and kind of what was going on in this time period. However, this book does have magical elements. We are set in a magical world where people have abilities, especially the Romanov family. They actually have a power called time walking where they can slow down time or fast or increase the speed of time for short amounts of time. And it's very rare, so it keeps them in power. Not only that, but they have this source through um, like mining where they're able to extract this very, very rare mineral that enhances your power and makes you even more powerful. So Anastasia um, is our main character and we get to hear, we get to see her point of view growing up, starting at the age of, I would say 11 or 12 through um, her adolescence and then early like 20, 19, 20 um, age range. So we get to see her kind of growing up in the most, probably like the first half of this book, which I would say is a little slower, um, but I still give it five stars because I loved how the story ended. Like the plot twist, like the how Sophie chose to make this story a completely like take a do totally different take on what happened to the Romanovs and um including magic like including magical elements and everything which is so unique to me and I love the love story between Damien and Anastasia. I will be getting into spoilers at the end of this so if you're not interested in reading this book or you are interested and you don't care you want me to tell you what happens anyway then I will be talking about it later on in this video but for the most of this video, I'm just gonna be talking about some uh, like a basic synopsis of the storyline and the magic system, what I liked about um, Sophie Lark's writing style and some of the reviews that I saw on Goodreads that people left. So if you guys don't know the story of Anastasia, I will kind of do a brief little summary. I'm not a historian and I did not study her history at all. This is just, you know, bits and pieces I've gotten through like online research that I've done and you know, watching the movie, reading this book, like different things you hear here and there about um, their family. So Tsar Nicholas II, I believe is the Tsar of Russia at the time. And he has five children, if I'm not mistaken, um, four daughters and a young son who is the heir to the throne, Alexei. And Alexei is sick. He actually has a blood disorder, which makes him more susceptible to injury um, that could result in, you know, a fatality. So he's very looked after, very closely regarded, and they end up getting the help of a monk or a man named Marsputin to kind of nurse him back to health and keep an eye on him, try and alleviate his suffering as much as possible. There are notes of or accounts of a man named Rasputin, which I think is how we get the villain in the movie adaptation of the story, as well as the book adaptation that we're talking about today. What is not true is that he is responsible for the deaths of the Romanov family, as far as I know. 
Um, basically what happens is the people revolt and they make a party, a political party called the Bolshevik party. And essentially, um, Tsar Nicholas abdicates from the throne and him and his family go into hiding, but they get captured and, um, very, very brutally executed by the Bolshevik party. It is said that Anastasia was able to escape from this massacre of her and her family but it was later um, revealed to have not been true and she was later found in another grave um, and correctly identified as Anastasia. So the entire family, the servants, the pets, everyone were unfortunately killed and that kind of was the end of the Tsar regime and then the Bolsheviks kind of took over from there. The movie adaptation obviously does not follow that. We do have the murder of her family, but she's able to escape, which is kind of where we think of, you know, Anastasia as the lost princess and she's a true heir of the throne and that kind of mystery that goes around with her name that a lot of people are probably familiar with. In this book, we do get some of the elements that are true in this book is the kind of unsettled political issues that are going around with the people and with the Romanov family and just kind of resentment toward the royal family and the court system and not having any power for the people. So they wanting a, a parliament, they're wanting voices, whereas Tsar Nicholas is very much like if the people don't like it, then we have Anya's point of view in this, but we get to see her growing up around her younger brother, who is the heir, and she's really, really upset that she is so very um, high-spirited and high-energy and independent and strong, and she really, really wishes that she had a voice because at this time, women just aren't really thought of that way, especially um, being a grand duchess. She doesn't have that power. Her main job is to behave, look pretty, and marry someone with a high ranking and high social status. So especially with her magical abilities, which um, we get into later on in the book and the rest of the family, you learn pretty quickly that because she's not a man, she is unable to do a lot of things that she wished she could do, even though she is very powerful. We're also introduced to a man named Damien, who is a servant. He's working for the royal family as like this guardsman, like he's in the military academy. And he is friends with Anastasia very early on in the book. They are, they kind of grow up together. So we see their friendship grow throughout the book. Like I said earlier, the book kind of starts out very slow. The storytelling is good, but because we get a lot of um, slow paced kind of storytelling of her as a young girl, if you're looking for a romance book, you may get kind of bored with this, but I would still encourage you to keep pushing through it because it just gets so good from there. We have a lot of like enemy forces going on. We have the creepy Rasputin who is really mysterious. We don't know what's going on with him and what his like ulterior motives are because he's very mysterious. There's some weird things going on and people start connecting the dots and maybe wondering if it has anything to do with Rasputin um, and his abilities that we don't really know too much about. And it isn't until later on in the book that, you know, you get the clash, we get magic, we get Anastasia grown up and, you know, a lot of things come to head. But what I really, really loved most about this book was not just the fantasy world that we're in intertwined with this storyline, but the growth and the character development of Anastasia and Damien from adolescence, from like 12, 13 year old kids to adulthood and kind of their, seeing their friendship blossom to love. I personally don't love like friends to lovers book tropes, but this was just some, done so well. I could not get enough of it. And I loved where how we got Damien's point of view towards the end of the book. It was so fun to read. It just warms your heart how his, love is portrayed for um anastasia in this book and how he talks about her and his love for her and it was just so so fun to read i didn't think i was going to give this book a five star rating and i'm really happy that i did i'm really happy i kept reading this book because like i said the ending was such a twist i love how sophie lark took like where she took this book and i encourage everyone to read it if you're interested in 
the story of Anastasia. If you like fantasy and romance, I think you should give it a go. Just push through the beginning because it is kind of slow, but it's worth it. It gets so, so good. Like halfway through, it just takes off and you won't be able to put it down. So one of the reviews that I see here on uh, Goodreads is it's another amazing retelling of Anastasia, um, talking about how the author communicates with their readers and basically just Sophie Lark really, really understanding her audience and knowing what they want and how to give them what they want. And she was really able to successfully do that with this book and enter into the fantasy genre, which is so cool. Like from going from just strictly contemporary romance, dark, um, dark romance to a fantasy book is really, really cool. And I would love to pick her brain and see how she did that. Um, another person wrote, it was the happy ever after Anastasia deserved, which I completely agree. Um, everyone loves a happily ever after, I feel like. So if you like that, if you love Disney movies, I think you should read this book too, because it is just, it's very, very cute the, how it ends and how everything works together for everybody. Um, it gets kind of dark in some places and you don't really think it's going to get where it gets. And then, yeah, it's just a great puzzle that just fits perfectly together in this book. And it, oh, it's so good. Um, the story starts with the young privileged Anastasia, which is so true. Um, and we begin to see her become disillusioned by the superficial world around her, particularly as her friendship with Damien um, begins to blossom. She's not the prettiest, she's not the smartest but um and she has like a lot of complicated magical abilities so it leads her to form a tense relationship with rasputin um and it takes the book on a really really crazy journey so this girl definitely understands what's going on in this book um but that she very th thought it was very emotional and the ending was very utterly satisfying and in a way I haven't felt in a long time, which completely agree. I'm trying to look for a one star review, but guys, I'm struggling over here. There is a lot of five star reviews for this book. Um, so someone that gave it a one star rating said they DNF'd it at 31%, that um, it was a letdown, um, very boring. Another person gave it two stars and said they got really sleepy and just couldn't get through it, which again, if you could just get through the beginning part and if you have an affinity for historical fiction and understanding kind of the time frame, what's going on in history at this time, I think you will appreciate kind of why Sophie is taking so long to get to like the main points of the story. Um, and it is really important as well when you get later into it with Rasputin and what's going on there. So yeah just push through it if you have negative things to say about it I don't, or from reading these negative reviews that's what i would say but yeah that's pretty much it um, i'm going to get into some spoilers now um so if you don't want to hear this go ahead and skip the rest thank you for watching um go ahead and read this book but now we are going to get into some spoiler content. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some really, really interesting things that I found super unique to this plot that I have never read before. Um, and actually kind of reminded me of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So in the scene where we are able to transport Harry and Hermione back in time to stop a lot of bad things from happening, that's what like, when that happens in Anastasia and she's able to um, kind of like time travel two years into the past, I was mind blown. I was so upset when all of this stuff happened earlier in the book and like her whole family got killed off, which I kind of figured would happen because it does happen in the movie and in real life. So I figured sometime during this book, someone was gonna get killed off and I was pretty much expecting it to be her family. So when it did happen, I, even though it was really, really gruesome and violent, I was kind of like, okay, whatever. But then that happened and I was just like, oh my God, it was so good. I wasn't expecting it. It was a plot twist that my heart didn't know it needed. And I was so happy that it did because it was really, really fun to read. And um, we get to see Anastasia try and show Damien a lot of stuff that happened two years forward, I guess. And he doesn't really understand. And it's just, 
I, I love their dynamic. I love how they were just drawn to each other. It's like a weird magnetism type of relationship between them, kind of like soulmates, I guess. So I loved their relationship and how it not only growed, but how you see them understand more of their love for each other and how they were like so meant to be, which I don't know, it's just really cute. Another thing that I thought was really cool was how Rasputin ended up being a vampire. Like, the fact that they put vampires in this book was so fun to me. I was not expecting that. I just thought it was gonna be everyone having different abilities um, and like magical abilities. And I thought that Rasputin's power was kind of like Damien's where when you touch them, he sucks the life out of them, but Rasputin was more, if you touch them, you suck out the magic. That's kind of what I thought it was. Um, and it ended up being, you know, you know, the whole vampire thing. And we got to see that. So that was so fun. Cause you get like, I don't know if it's Russian folklore. I don't know if that's what this is at all. Um, like the magical beasts that are in here and stuff like the giant wolf and everything like that. So if it is, that's really cool on Sophie doing her homework. But if it's not, and she just put vampires in there just cause I'm here for it anyway, because I haven't read a vampire book in a while and I love it. And it was not like overdone or just some random thing she put in there to like grip a random vampire lover reader. So I really appreciated that. I thought it was very unique, very well done. And yeah, so that was so cool. I, I really, really liked that. Another thing I really wanted to talk about is the illustrations in this book. I thought they were so pretty and I love seeing Anastasia and Damien's illustrations because just seeing them come to life really reminded me of the movie and actually I need to rewatch it. But um, I don't know if you guys can see it well here. I'll try and take myself out of the picture, but every few pages or so you would get an image like this. And at the beginning of every chapter, there is an illustration as well, along with a song to go with what's happening in the book, which I thought was so cool. And the last song in the book was Once Upon a December, which is from the movie. And oh my gosh, I get all the feels. I'm feeling it right now, it is so good. So I, there was so much that I loved about this book. And if you guys have read this, um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments because I want to know what your favorite parts are, if you expected the plot twist at the end, and if you think Sophie is going to be coming out with some more fantasy books, and if there's any other books you think I should read from her, let me know as well. And if you haven't read this book, please give it a shot. Push through the beginning. I know it's kind of boring. Take your time. It gets better, I promise. And the ending you will not expect. It will be a happily ever after. I can promise you that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth reading, especially during the winter. I think it's great for this season. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know again if you guys like this background and me standing. Um, and yeah, until next time, I will catch you in my next video. Bye!